Hi Steph, I'm glad you could come in today. Maybe we could start by getting an idea of how your mood's been since um, I saw you last week. Um, it's actually been pretty low again after I left therapy last week. I don't know what happened. I just just didn't really feel good and it's been just been feeling pretty hopeless this week actually. Oh really? Yeah. And, and it sounds like you noticed that that started pretty much right after you left the therapy session last week. Is that when you noticed that change? Yeah, I guess mm. so. Like that evening, I think. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So you were kind of by the time you got home or when yeah. you were at home. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just started thinking, just, well, I guess, started feeling really low and just thinking mm. it's just not really going to work for me. Yeah. 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 Oh, gosh. Yeah. It sounds like that was a really tough evening. And you said it's kind of been continuing on since then. Yeah. Most of the time. Mm. Yeah. I was hearing you say that I was thinking that might be a really good example for us to work through on that thought diary that we talked about last time. Yeah. Um, try to get a bit of an idea of why your mood might have changed in that way. Okay. I remember we were talking about how important your thoughts might be yeah. in contributing to your mood. Yeah. It might be a really good chance to see if we can notice if there's any of those connections happening or if there was any of those connections happening last Wednesday. Yeah. Um, so I might grab you a thought diary. Why don't you follow along with that? Okay. And then we've also got it written up here on the board mm -hmm. um, so we can um, kind of jot things down there as we go as well. Is that that looking familiar from last time? The yeah, yeah, this is yeah. what we went through it before with the examples. Yeah. Yeah. And you remember it kind of folds over, so I've just sort yeah. of folded it so we can follow along. But we're only going to, we're just going to start with the first little column there mm -hmm. um, and we'll put that up on the board as we go. So, what's the first bit we do? Do you remember what the A stands for on the thought diary? Um, yeah, so the, the acting activating event. The so that's really where we just jot down what happened. You know, yeah. So when do you think you first noticed that change in your mood? Um, <clears throat> I think it was, yeah, kind of walking out of the session last week. Okay, so walking out of session with Laura yeah. last week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what, what was that change in mood that you noticed? So this, I'm moving now down to the C bit, which is the, the consequences or how you felt afterwards. Um, just pretty sad, pretty sad. low. Sad and low. Yeah. yeah. Anything else that you noticed just in terms of how you felt in your body or um, um, other kind of emotions that you experienced? Um, I felt pretty... I guess heavy. Yep. Um, I didn't really feel like I had a lot of energy. Felt kind of tired. Yeah. Um, I just really wanted to go to bed. Yeah. And did you end up kind of going to bed early that night, or? Yeah, I think I actually took a nap in the after, like after I got home. Oh, you took a nap. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's another part of that consequences, isn't it? You felt really sad and low. Yeah. You were kind of low in energy, tired, and you ended up taking a nap. Yeah. as well yeah so we could write all of that on um so that sad and low feeling um g give me a sense of how strong that was on last week wednesday afternoon um it was it was pretty bad actually i guess kind of like a if you had to rate it out of 10 or like a percentage out of 100 what would you give it like a seven or an eight probably seven or eight out of ten yeah yeah yeah, oh, that's pretty strong. Huh? Yeah, it kind of hit me. Yeah, I'm not surprised you noticed that it affected your energy and that mm. your body felt different, all of those things. Um, so we've kind of got an idea. So this is what happened. Mm -hmm. This is when you noticed the change. This is what emotions you noticed. Yeah. And, and you said you're even still feeling some of that kind of now, um, a week yeah, later. Yeah, stuck around. Yeah. So what was on your mind when you left the session last week? Um... I kind of remember thinking to myself that it was it was all a bit pointless. And when you say it was all a bit pointless, what were you kind of thinking might have been pointless? Kind of trying to get better. Oh, okay. So, so getting better, trying to get better. Yeah. Coming to therapy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so coming to therapy. Yeah. Is, um. So are you thinking it's a bit pointless or are you thinking it's pointless? Um, I think I was thinking it was pointless, completely. Okay. Completely pointless. 
I'm starting to get a feeling now for why that sad and low kind of feeling might have been so strong. Kind of yeah. quite a good match, isn't it? Yeah. Coming to therapy is completely pointless. Okay. Was there any other thoughts that you had when you left the session? Um, I guess I was kind of thinking that it's, I'm always going to feel this way. Like I'm not, okay. I'm not going to get better. It's not oh. going to work. Of course, there's lots there, isn't it? I'm always going to feel what you feel. And when you say this way, is that depressed or? Yeah. Yeah, I'm always going to feel depressed. And you said as well something like this isn't going to work or? Th um, yeah. 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 This isn't going to work. And given that you were thinking that way, does it kind of match for you that you kind of make sense that you would have been feeling the way that you did? Yeah, mm. I guess, yeah, they're not really happy thoughts. Was there any other kind of thoughts that you noticed at the time? Um, anything um, else? Thoughts about therapy, thoughts about how you were doing other things? Yeah, I guess that I'm not good at therapy. Oh, like I'm not, gosh. Like I'm not, a, not good at this. Not good at therapy. Wow, that's a lot of things. Yeah, and looking at that, I'm thinking there's quite a few things there that it might be really help for us to, helpful for us to have a bit of a look at, um, because if these things were true, coming to therapy is completely pointless. I'm always going to feel depressed. This isn't going to work. I'm not good at therapy. Then we'd really have a problem. Like, and we'd really need to kind of focus on fixing that problem. But I'm wondering if it's possible, just as we've talked about in the past, that some of these thoughts might reflect your depression. You know, there might be things that you know might be not 100% accurate, that might be part of your depression. And if that's true, we might be able to, you know, adjust them or think a little differently about the situation and hopefully feel a bit differently as a result. Mm. Yeah. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. yeah we'll oh, for go. giving it a go, Steph. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so before we kind of leap into that, the idea of kind of challenging mm. or getting curious about some of those thoughts, there's one more thing I wanted to do, and that was to have a look and see if we could notice any of those unhelpful thinking styles. Now, I'm just going to grab you that that handout. You remember, um, we've got that handout about unhelpful thinking styles. So remember, these were the things that are really common when people are depressed that mm -hmm. they start to think in these characteristic ways mm -hmm. um, and you know some of them you'll notice happening for you a lot of the time and some of them not so much. Um, I'm just wondering though when you look at these thoughts here is there any of those unhelpful thinking styles that pop out at you or that you think yeah I reckon that could be a bit of what's happening. Yeah. Um maybe I guess a bit of black and white thinking we, which one where do you think that might be coming because I think you're probably right um, which one do you think might I guess be a bit black this, and white this isn't going to work so this um, isn't going to work yep so kind of assuming you know there's no chance it's going to work yeah, yeah. Um, this is a pretty strong black and white statement as well isn't it coming yeah. to therapy is completely pointless yeah um, yeah um, so those ones might be with notice black and white thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. All or nothing thinking. Yeah. So I mean that might kind of give us a bit of an idea that there might be little bits of information you could be missing, you know, mm. if you're seeing things in a really all or nothing way. Um, is there anything else that you notice there in terms of those unhelpful thinking styles? Um, there's one we spoke a little bit about last week. The kind of jumping to conclusions one yeah. I guess like mm. I guess you know like I'm always gonna feel depressed so that one might be here I'm just gonna draw a little arrow here that one might be that jumping to conclusions yeah. Yeah. so again that might tell us that there's there could be some other possible kind of outcomes that that might be possible or likely or mm -hmm. um, uh, possible, yeah. Um, so we've picked up on a couple of those unhelpful thinking styles, so that might start us thinking maybe this, there is a bit of that distorted or biased thinking happening here. One final thing then is to think about which of these thoughts, so we've got coming to therapy is completely pointless, I'm always going to feel depressed, 
this isn't going to work, I'm not good at therapy, is there one of those that really links up to this feeling? Like, um, so the idea here is we try and find a hot thought, so mm. a thought that's most connected up with the, you know, the emotions that you have, um, so we can focus on that one. Mm. Do, you, do you know which one of those is kind of the most hot thought, the one that's most um, kind of distressing for you? Well, I mean, they're all pretty yeah. low, like looking, mm. at, looking at them on the board, um, mm. I guess. Probably, I'm always going to feel depressed. That one, I I'm that, always that one going really gets to me. feel depressed. I'll put a big circle around that one. That's mm -hmm. the one we're going to focus on. Mm -hmm. How much do you believe that one? I'm always going to feel depressed. How, if you had to rate it out of a hundred, say like a percentage, probably like ninety. Whoa. Okay. So you're believing this really strongly. Yeah. So gosh, when I see you've rated it as ninety percent, you know, I think even if you were able to believe that a little bit less, 70%, you know, 60%, even 50%, I think you'd get quite a big change in how you felt, like if there was any doubt um, in that. So I think this is really going to be worth working on. So now we're going to move to this part of the thought diary. Oh, yeah. So if you grab yours, you can follow along. So this bit is D for disputations. I'm just going to put D so I have a little bit of room. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the section where we're trying to be a bit curious about the thoughts. Rather than just taking them to be facts, we're going to check them out a little bit. And so the first bit, as you can see on the thought diary, it's looking at evidence for and against. Mm -hmm. So is there any evidence for the thought? Is there any evidence against the thought? Mm -hmm. um, so we'll start with four. Yep. Um, these ones you probably find are coming to mind pretty, pretty easy. So I'm just going to write up four yep. and then tell me, what would be your sort of your main reasons for believing that you're always going to feel depressed? What kind of leads you to think that? I mean, I've been depressed for years, so why? Okay. Yeah, I guess I just don't know why it would change. Okay. Um, so when you say you've been depressed for years, so we're trying to be as factual as possible. Mm -hmm. So when when were you? When did you first get depressed? Uh, how many years has it been? Probably three. Three years. Yeah. So if we write that, yeah, I've been depressed for three years. And I can imagine that would be the main piece of evidence. Is there other things that you would see as evidence for this belief that you're always going to feel depressed? I don't know. I guess, it, yeah, it's just kind of how I feel. Like, mm -hmm. I haven't seen much change. Okay. Okay. I haven't seen much change. I'm going to leave that there for the moment. We might need to go back and tweak mm -hmm. that one a little bit as we go along. But So it sounds like you're saying you haven't seen much change mm -hmm. um, along the way. Um, so maybe we can have a look at some of the evidence against just to see if there is anything that doesn't quite fit with this belief. So this is the bit where we need to be really, really fair mm -hmm. and not kind of rule things out before we've put them up. We're looking for any piece of evidence that doesn't quite fit with this really, really strong belief. So is there anything, you know, any experiences you've had, any things you know to be true that don't quite fit with a belief that you're always going to feel depressed? Geez, I don't know. Um, I guess it's hard for me to know that. Um, Sometimes I feel okay. Okay. So tell me a bit more about that. Sometimes I feel okay. Like, what have you noticed about the pattern of your mood um, sort of more recently? Um, I guess I have like kind of like a good day here and there, yeah. but then I just end up waking up depressed the next day. Okay. I have some good days here and there. Yeah. Maybe not a whole day, but okay. part of it. And have you noticed any patterns in how often you're getting good days compared to bad days over the last few weeks? Um, I guess I've had, like, probably not in the last week, but before that I was having maybe one or two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, before this last week you were having, having a few good days, mm -hmm. having a couple of good days in a week. Yeah. Um, and was that an improvement from where it had been? I'm trying to remember what you were saying when I first met with you a few weeks ago. 
Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Move forward this week. So hang on, I just want to check I'm writing this, I'm getting this right because it needs to be really accurate. Yeah. So before this week, I'd been having a few more good days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I've been having a few more good days. One of the other things I was wondering about, you've said up here that you've been depressed for three years. Mm. Has that sort of been constant through that time? Because that wasn't quite what I remembered from when I first met with you. Has there been any sort of changes or periods where you haven't been depressed over the last few years? Um, yeah, when I went on that holiday, okay. when I went to Europe. Yeah. I was, How long was that for that you, um, you think you weren't depressed? Maybe three weeks. Okay, yep. So I wasn't depressed was that last year when you were in Europe yeah last year when I was in Europe okay. Um, okay and I'm wondering as well you've this isn't the first time you've been through depression is mm. it what, what's your experience before remind me um, um, it was pretty bad in high school for okay. about a year as well, yeah. kind of like year 11. Okay. And yeah. what, what happened there? What happened after that year? Or um, I think I kind of got used to the workload a little bit yeah. um, and I started feeling kind of back to normal again. Back to normal, yeah. yeah. So you, you came out of that depression that you had when you were in year 11, yeah. Yeah, I guess how so. Would, how would you with that? You came out of it, you recovered from it, you... Um, got through it I don't know what would you say it kind of went away okay um, uh, my depression went away before has mm -hmm. went away before now I'm going to um, okay yep. and um, is there anything else that you can think of that kind of would be evidence that doesn't quite fit with the belief that you're always going to feel depressed no, I don't think so. Have you, I don't know, have you had friends that have overcome depression or have you kind of seen other people get through depression? Um, I think so. I mean, it's pretty, like, it's pretty hard. People don't talk about it that much. But I yeah. guess, yeah, I guess I've had some friends that have gone through pretty rough patches and, and gotten through it. Okay. So you've had some friends kind of get through depression, yeah. recover from depression. I'm just going to do a bit. Um, Um, so that's, you know, we've got a few things there, some really interesting things that you've identified that perhaps don't quite fit with the belief that you're always mm. going to feel depressed. Um, you've got some things in the for and some things in the against. Um, and in a little bit we're going to talk about how do you sort of balance those mm. up and make sense of all of those things being true. Um, but the next step I'm going to get you to go through is to have a look at the unhelpful thinking style. So mm -hmm. now if I just grab you, so if you have a look at, um, so this one here, I think you might have seen it before, but this is where it reminds you about the process of disputation. So it's taking oh, okay. you through looking at the evidence for and against, mm -hmm. and then it's got this section here about challenging unhelpful thinking styles. So. Mm -hmm. Remind me, what did you come up with? Black and white. Uh, and jumping to conclusions. Jumping to conclusions. So if so this one we've really identified as jumping to mm -hmm. conclusions. Is what's it sort of say there about what might be a good strategy for responding to that sort of early war uh, that sort of um, uh, unhelpful thinking style? Um, so the kind of questions they've got down are how do I know this? Okay. Uh, what are some alternative explanations for this? Um, and if I was feeling differently, would I still think this? Oh, okay. So why don't we try? Why don't we try those? So the first question was, how do I know this? Mm. So this is checking that you've got good, solid foundation for thinking that way. So how do you know? Uh, how do you know this? What is your basis for thinking this? Yeah, I guess kind of the, the evidence that I said before, oh, yeah. like yep. you know, so dear of being depressed for a really long mm. time and kind of seeming the same seems like it's here feels like it's here to stay okay okay so all right we'll leave that there and what was the next question remind me 
It's um, another thing we can try if we, we might be jumping to conclusions. Uh, what are some alternative explanations? Okay. So I'm, that doesn't exactly fit mm. the situation, but what are some alternative possibilities, I suppose, we could word that as? <clears throat> um, like as in so alternative is, to that idea? I'm always going to feel depressed. Like okay. What are some other possibilities? You might not entirely believe them, but what are some other possibilities? Yeah, I mean, I guess that I'm the opposite of that, that I'm not. Yeah. I don't really I might believe recover it. From my I might recover from my depression. Yeah. Is there some sort of middle ground or a few sort of middle ground options or um, based on maybe what you've seen with other people? Or? My, I might not always feel mm. depressed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Or I might, def might feel less depressed sometimes so we've got i um, might recover from my depression so that was the best case yeah, yeah. We'll, we hope for that one the next one was um i might not always feel depressed i might feel less depressed mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay so we've got a few other possibilities yeah. um and there was a third question there as well that i really wanted to get to what was that um one? that if i was feeling differently would i still think this because because I was really wanted to get to this question because I remembered, you know, how you were talking about some of these issues when mm. I met you a few weeks ago. And I reckon if I'd asked you at this time, do you think you're always going to be depressed? You might have said something a little bit different. I'm wondering, um, you know, in those first couple of sessions we had, what do you think you would have said um, um, when you're feeling less, you know, hopeless and less sad and less low? Um, I probably would have been less of a sad sack I think yeah. I would have been able to probably would have been a bit more hopeful do you, what what do you think you would have thought about this particular thing um I mean I still don't think I've ever really believed that I'll mm. recover 100 percent but okay. I think I had a bit more faith in that idea then like mm. you know maybe I, I will recover from this so maybe you had yeah. a bit of a sense that maybe you might recover from mm. from the depression yeah yeah um Another, another thought I had that might be relevant here is, um, is about how much of therapy we've actually done so mm. far. Um, so this is, let me, let me work this out. So we've had an assessment session mm -hmm. where I just pestered you with a lot of questions and we've had a couple of um, appointments and then today. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what's your sense about how quickly change usually happens in, in depression treatment? I guess I'd never really thought about it. Um, I don't know. Maybe, Any ideas? maybe a little bit longer. Yeah. 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 Do you think? I mean, we've kind of made some little yeah. starts on things that I hope might help with your depression. I think. What did we do last week? Um, we were talking about. Um, you know, ways you could change your behaviour, mm. you know, to feel less depressed. But that's the first kind of session we really talked about that. Mm. And then today we're really getting into this idea about the thought diary. Um, so I've really only, really only just started. Yeah. I, I wonder if you're being totally fair on yourself. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. I guess I've never been very good at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, one, one question I always like to ask in this section is, if you were giving advice to someone you cared about, like really cared mm. about, an important person, your best mate, your sister, mm. what would you say if they were telling you, I am always going to be depressed? Yeah, I guess I'd tell them that that probably isn't true, that if they work hard at it and do what they need to do, they can get through it. Yeah. Huh. Okay, so that if that's the advice you'd give someone that you really cared about. Yeah. You sound, you sound kind of convincing when you say that, you know. Yeah, I guess it's easier if to you, say it to someone else. It? Yeah, harder to believe when it's yourself. Yeah. So it, it is hard to believe it when it's yourself and not a friend, isn't yeah. it? But I wonder if there might be some element of truth to, to that, even for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, if it's true for other people, maybe it could be true for me. Maybe. Yeah. So we've gone through here, we've had a look at some of the evidence and, and there is some evidence for your belief and some evidence that perhaps doesn't quite fit with it. Mm. We've had a look at challenging the unhelpful thinking style. So if you have a look on your thought diary, you can see we've, we've had a look at that uh, mm -hmm. jumping to conclusions. We've asked ourselves some of those questions. Yeah. And then we've actually talked a little bit about the idea of changing your perspective. So mm -hmm. we asked that question, 
what would you say to someone you care about who is thinking the same yeah. way? And we've kind of got some ideas from that. But that brings us to the point where we flip over. If you get your, yours is nicely folded, but mm -hmm. if you get to that bit that says evaluation or balance thought. So this is the point when we're trying to take all of the things we've written down there in terms of evidence and alternative perspectives and challenging unhelpful thinking styles. And we try and come up with a bit of a summary. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to kind of really pick out the things that are most helpful or relevant for you and we want to put them in the summary. Um, so we come to a bit of a balance. Mm -hmm. um, so after looking at all the evidence kind of for and against your hot thought and having a look at those other um, disputation questions, um, what, what, what's the summary that you'd come up to with? Because um, with I'm trying to replace this, I'm always going to feel depressed with something that might be a bit more balanced, might take into account some of these other things we've identified. Yeah, so I guess um, we were kind of saying that maybe I'll be depressed at times and other times I'll be recovered or I'll okay. feel better. Okay, yeah. so that's the possibility that seems most most likely or most possible for you at the moment? Yeah, I guess out of all the ones we said, yeah. that's probably the one that, you, that, that seems a little bit realistic. Be true, yeah. yeah. Um, so it sounds like you're not ready to sign on for I'm never going to feel depressed again. <laughs> you're not uh -huh. quite. That wouldn't feel balanced to you, would it? Wouldn't feel realistic no. or accurate. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's just the complete other direction. Yeah, and with the with the um, balanced thought, we're always trying to find you know a thought that is realistic it's mm. accurate it fits with what you know yeah. um, but also might be a little more helpful in terms of the way you feel yeah. um, so so you said you know it's possible I might feel depressed some of the time and feel better some of the time yeah is that how you'd word it what did I miss I yeah. missed something there didn't I um, no, I think that was, that was the that main was, part yeah, of that's the main yeah. thing that yeah. Um, when we were talking a little bit about that, what would you say to a friend? It sounded like that might have been a little bit helpful for you to remember that you might think differently if this was someone else. Yeah. So kind Could of that go in your balanced thoughts somewhere too? Yeah. So probably if I actually work hard and do what I need to do, yeah, then I might be able to be feeling better some of the time. Feeling better some of the time. Yeah. So if I work hard in therapy, do what I'm, you know, do what we're working on, I might yeah. feel better some of the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So when you look at the balance thought, so if you look at the um, E, mm -hmm. um, and if you think of replace, if you think of instead of thinking I'm always going to feel depressed, if you are able to say, if I work hard, if I keep going with this, um, I might be able to feel let, um, not feel depressed some of the time. Mm -hmm. Would you feel as sad or low if you thought about it in that way? Probably not, because I guess I'd feel like there was some hope. Yeah, yeah. So I'm guessing you, the sadness or low feeling wouldn't go away entirely. No. No? Would you, but would, how would you rate it, do you think? So we've got seven to eight out of ten, which is really a lot. How, would, how do you think you'd rate it if you were to, you know, be reminding yourself of that more balanced thought instead? Um, maybe like a, a four? Four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what impact would that have on things like how kind of heavy you feel in your body and your level of energy and how tired you feel? Yeah, I guess it'd probably be a bit better. Yeah. Um, I know that when I'm really low, I just don't feel like doing anything. But yeah. if I'm feeling less mm. low, I might be able to kind of get through the day a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, and you know we were talking last time about how um, how positive that can be if you're able to do activities that give mm. you a sense of achievement, give you a sense of pleasure in your day. So that could start to have a bit more of a positive impact too. Yeah, yeah, maybe. yeah. Good work on coming up with a balanced thought because this is a really tough one. You know, having the thought I'm always going to feel depressed. Mm. If you're walking out of a session thinking that way. I can absolutely understand that your mood might be quite mm. low, but it sounds like by going through all this process today, you've been able to kind of have a few alternative possibilities. You've mm. been able to, um, you know, maybe uh, think of some other ways of saying this. Yeah. yeah. So, so what would be your take-home message from what we've talked about today? Do you think? Um, yeah, I guess maybe to try not to be so black and white all the time, mm. not so extreme. Yeah. So finding those kind of middle ground 
it sounds like it was a little bit helpful for you. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm, I tend to do that a lot. Like it's oh, either really? one way or the other. So maybe kind of thinking about those shades of grey a little bit more. Mm. So those things like um, it's possible I might not feel depressed all of the time. That was, you know, yeah. kind of a good take home message. Yeah, because yeah, when we kind of first, you know, thought of the opposite of that, I just it didn't fit. Yeah, it didn't fit, but I guess the middle stuff could work a little bit better. Yeah, I really like that take home message. I think that's a really good one to take away from today. Yeah, um, and I guess I just need to remember that we've just gotten started as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we certainly have. We've got a ways to go yet. 